Mm, so smooth. <laughs> So what you're looking at right now is the Musical Fidelity M2SI, an integrated amplifier that's designed to give you a high-end experience without the high-end price tag. And look at it, it's just such a cute little guy. So the first thing that you all need to know about this unit is that it is not a high-tech solution. In fact, there are no real features built into this integrated whatsoever. No headphone jack or built-in DAC, phono stage, or streaming capabilities. Heck, it doesn't even have tone controls. Because this unit is a purest audiophile solution using high-quality parts designed to maximize sound quality. Only, if we were to be entirely honest with ourselves, a lot of the money also went to the beautiful casework. And hey, no hate. I like this front metal piece here, it's smooth to the touch, and then we have this big, chunky metal volume control up front. Mm, just really nice stuff. In fact, I don't mind saying, I can't think of too many other integrated amps in this price class that offer up the same look and build. Speaking of price, it retails for $999 US dollars, but I'm just going to call it $1000 from this point onwards. And when it comes to power specifications, it'll output a respectable 72 watts per channel into 8 ohms. If you want more specifications, just click on the description box below and follow the link to the product page. But for now, I'm going to flip this unit around so we can look at this rear end, and then I'm going to talk about how I think it performs. So here's the booty, and to be honest, it's kind of underwhelming, right? I mean, there's not really a whole lot to talk about here. So going from left to right, we have our terminals for the speaker cables. We have a CD input, a tuner input. Now right here is actually a pretty interesting feature. We have a home theater bypass. So if you're one of those people that wants to run a home theater rig and a two-channel rig in the same space, that could be a useful feature for you. Next we have two analog inputs, a tape in, a tape out, and then we have a dedicated pre-out. So if you're somebody who wants more power, you can add a separate power app to this unit. Or if you're somebody who doesn't need more power, but maybe you want to connect a powered subwoofer, well, you can connect it via this pre-out. And then we have the IC in it for our power cord, and that is it. So now it's time to discuss whether or not this is just a pretty face or if it has sound quality to match. Let's go. So, is the M2SI nothing more than a pretty face with mediocre sound for the money? Or is it a pretty face that just so happens to offer great value for the money, at least in terms of performance? Well, the answer to me is somewhere in between both of those points. Now, as I go on throughout this video, hopefully you'll better understand where I'm coming from. But first, let's go ahead and summarize the overall sound of the M2SI. And believe it or not, this is going to be pretty straightforward because the M2SI has such an obvious sound. So let me put it to you all like this. If you're looking for a solution in this range and you know you want a super smooth and warm sounding experience, something that's like a nice warm cozy blanket that's wrapping around you on a cold winter's day, then yeah, the M2SI is not for you. Nor is it going to be for somebody who's looking for a conventionally accurate sound. Because what you're getting out of the M2SI is going to be a presentation that's all about openness and clarity and dynamic output with quite a bit of enthusiasm sprinkled into the presentation. Or to put it another way, essentially the treble is going to be elevated, whereas the mid-range and the bass it's actually going to be pretty neutral. So let's go into more detail here starting with the treble because this is where most of the character lies. As I just mentioned, the treble is boosted and when you do this, well, you do two things. Number one, you make it easy for the listener to discern detail, particularly at low volumes, and then number two, it gives the sound some spunk, some liveliness, some drive. And how you interpret the treble, well, it's going to depend on a number of different variables. It depends on the kind of speakers you use, what kind of sound you like, and of course, what your reference points are. But I think for a lot of people who are just coming into the world of a high quality integrated amp like this, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it because one of the things that really is cool to experience is when you listen to familiar recordings and you're hearing details that you've never heard before. If that's what you're looking for, then the M2SI stands a good chance of fulfilling that promise. Now, one of the things that I have to give Musical Fidelity credit for is the fact that they've elevated the treble response without making it sound overly harsh and grainy. And for something in this price range, that's actually a pretty good achievement because most components tend to sound a bit unrefined in that regard when the treble is elevated. And I think that's why so many reviewers refer to the Musical Fidelity as having more of a refined sound. Now let's move on and talk about the mid-range. So the mid-range, believe it or not, guys, 
is pretty neutral. I wouldn't call it warm. I wouldn't call it thin. It just does the job. It's open. It's clear. I think it has a detailed presentation that most people are going to enjoy. And the same applies to the base. The base is clean. It's clear. It's nice and controlled. In fact, I want to really touch on that because I've noticed some people will look at the damping factor specification on this integrated and they'll assume that, oh, it can't control base for the life of it. But you know what? That's not true. In the real world, it has no problems giving you a controlled and detailed low-end response. Even if you use speakers that use nice thick drivers, don't worry about it. Now I need to be clear though, the bass isn't going to sound overly muscular. In fact, that leads me to one aspect of the M2SI's performance that I vehemently disagree with when it comes to other reviewer summaries, which is a lot of people say that this has a very muscular sounding presentation, a very powerful sound to it. And yeah, while it does share some similarities with the M6SI that I reviewed earlier, no, it doesn't sound like this muscular beast. What it sounds like is a clean and clear little integrated amplifier that has some elevated treble to it. Doesn't mean it has weak power output. In fact, if you're driving average sensitivity speakers and let's say a room that's 20 by 15, it'll probably have enough power for you unless you listen at crazy volumes. Just don't expect it to sound like a bigger amplifier than what it is. And then lastly, let's talk about dynamic output. So this is another strong point for the N2SI. It has great dynamic contrast. And what I mean by that is when you listen to music, it can go from a quiet passage to a loud passage effortlessly, at least for something in its price range and its size. And it can do so very quickly. So it can start and stop on a dime. And I think that's a wonderful attribute, especially to those of you who like to listen to classical music. So that's going to be it for the summary. Again, open, clear, dynamic sound with elevated treble. But now it's time to talk about how it compares and contrasts to other gear because this is what really hammers home its value proposition and whether or not it's something that would be good for you. Okay, so before I get started, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. While I think the M2SI represents a fair value for the money, once you begin comparing it to other components in the same general range, well, that's when you begin to realize that there's a lot of competition out there. Now for this section, my primary focus is going to be on how it compares to the IOTA VX SA3 and the IOTA VX SA3 PA3 combination. Now I know what you're thinking. Sean, what are you doing, dude? This isn't even a fair comparison. And in many respects, you're right. The SA3 is a much smaller integrated amplifier. It's more of a full feature product. And plus, most importantly, it only retails for 550 US dollars, whereas the M2SI retails for nearly double the price at $1,000. And yet, when you compare both products together in person, you realize that they actually compete very evenly with one another. And as always, it's just a matter of determining what's important to you. So let's go ahead and start off with the advantages that I feel the M2SI has. So the M2SI, as I said, has more of a lively and clean presentation, whereas the IOTA VX is more about balance and just a little bit of warmth. So when you look at the M2SI, I mean, first let's get this out of the way. The casework is on a whole other level. I think it looks a lot better sitting on a shelf or wherever you plan on putting it. And plus, it feels better to the touch, if that means anything to you. But when it comes to actual performance, well, the M2SI is going to give you more of that lively experience. It's going to sound more detailed, particularly into treble. The mid-range is going to take on a slightly cleaner, more detailed sound. Same with the bass. The bass is going to be more controlled than what you get out of the SA3 by itself. And then you're going to get better dynamic output. So overall, there's going to be a lot going for the M2SI here. However, the IOTA VX SA3 also has its advantages. So starting off with balance. The integration between the treble, the mid-range, and the bass I find to be superior. The top end isn't as lively. It's a little smoother by comparison. And when you take all of that together, I feel like the SA3 pairs up better to a wider variety of speakers. Now, when it comes to power output, believe it or not, they're very similar to one another. I'd say that there's not going to be a huge difference between them. So again, we have a completely different listening experience. Do you want warmth and balance, or do you want something that's more lively and dynamic and open sounding? However, where things really get interesting is when you take the IOTA VX PA3 and add it to the SA3 because you're not taking up much more real estate. You're actually in and around the same price point as the M2SI and now it's more of a fair fight and this is where things 
I think, go into the advantage of IOTA VX because what you're now getting is a presentation that's much bigger in scale. The base is now stronger and more controlled. You're getting more of a lively presentation because when you put both of those components together, you start to remove the neutrality of the IOTA VX sound and now it starts to get a little bit more lively. So the only real advantage that Musical Fidelity has in this case scenario is I still think the dynamic output is a little bit more superior, especially micro dynamics. And I still think that the sound is just a little bit, just a little teeny tiny bit more lively and more clear. But again, it all boils down to what your preferences are. So the only other components I want to briefly touch on here because I've been rambling for a while in this section is how it compares to the Marantz PM8006. It's a very even matchup. I think the musical fidelity has a little bit more refinement to the treble and more control within the bass. And again, superior dynamic output, but the Marantz is going to be just a little bit better balanced between the main frequency bands. And plus it comes with a lot of useful features for not a lot more money and otherwise is very competitive and overall overall sound quality. When it comes to how the M2SI compares to the Cambridge CXA81, the Cambridge has more of that V-curve sound, boosted treble and boosted bass. However, the boosted treble on the CXA81 is not as refined sounding as what you get on the M2SI. However, you get a sense of stronger bass output and definitely a bigger sense of scale in the mid-range with the Cambridge unit as compared to the more clean and open sound of the musical fidelity. So again, it all just boils down to what you want. So with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the kind of speakers that it pairs up well to, at least in my opinion. Okay, since I rambled on for so long in the previous section, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. So in a nutshell, I feel like the M2SI pairs up best to speakers that are known for having a relatively smooth and warm sounding presentation. Let me give you some examples. ELAC Debut Series, the Bacard Audio S300 and S400, LS35A and its derivatives, the Dynaudio Evoke series, or if you want to go bougie, the Dynaudio Contour series. We have the Nola Boxers, we have a lot of Wharfdale products. Like I said, anything that's known for having a smooth and warm sounding presentation. I do not think it sounds very good with products that are more lively in and of themselves, like Klipsch, Focal, Kef. Don't get me wrong, if you like that kind of sound, it's worth experimenting with. Basically, it'll double down on that presentation. Some of you are going to like it, but some of you are going to feel like it's too much of a good thing. And this unit scales decently well, so don't be afraid to pair it up with speakers that cost as much as two to even $3,000. Provided it has enough power for your listening space and for your room, you should be good to go. And as I mentioned earlier, the power delivery is good. No, it's not a muscular sounding amplifier, but it's still good power. It should be enough for most people who listen at sane volumes. Anyway, that's going to be it for this section. So now let's just go ahead and wrap up this review. Okay, so we've reached the end of the review, which means hopefully by now you have a pretty solid idea as to what to expect from the N2SI if you were to try it for yourself, which is in summary, a beautiful case with a very distinct sound. It's all about openness and clarity, strong dynamic output with this lively character, thanks to a bump in the treble. Some of you are going to love this package while others will not. So what I want to do now is to close out this video with my thoughts regarding value because it's such an interesting thing to ponder, especially when it comes to this product. Because on one hand, you have to bear in mind that the M2SI was meant to represent the entry point into the musical fidelity lineup, to have both the look, the build, and the sound. And to that end, I think they've done a great job, and I think it represents a fair value, especially when you consider the fact that moving up the line, you have to go to the M3SI, which is literally the same exact product, only with a couple features built in for 500 more dollars. So yeah, by comparison, that makes the M2SI look like a great value. However, what muddies the waters quite a bit is the fact that here in North America, there was a dealer that got a hold of hundreds of these units and they were able to sell them for $5.99 new for the better part of a year and a half. And that's naturally changed the equity of this product. So I think a lot of people in North America see it as more of a $600 solution versus a $1,000 solution. And that price gap makes a big difference. It's the difference between a fairly neutral review, which is what you're watching here, to a rave review with me encouraging everybody to go out and try it for yourself just to see if you would like it, because at that price, why not? So ultimately, I think with where it is right now, 
it's a solid value. It's not amazing. It's not horrible by any means. And if you like the casework, you think you'd like this type of presentation, then I think it's still worth trying out. But ultimately, guys, that is going to be my final take on the M2 SI. Hopefully you took something away from this video. I look forward to reading your thoughts below on this whole situation. And until next time, enjoy the music and peace.